we have say we have x not x1 and so on x n points then correspondingly we have fx not fx1 and so on fxn and f prime x not f prime x1 and so on f prime x n right so in total we have two n conditions two n conditions two. sorry two n plus two conditions right so we say that we have a polynomial there exists a polynomial of degree two n minus one right and and it f of x not plus x minus x not f prime x not in this case so and then so two x minus two n plus two conditions uh, hoga to polynomial two n plus one sorry two n plus ones yeah right sorry x minus x not square then f of x not x not and x one plus and so on right this is the way we do so this must have been discussed in the class where if i in particular if i want to write what is f of x not x not x1 it was nothing but f of x not x1 minus f prime at x not right this is what how we solve so it is the newton's kind of harmonic interpolation newton's form of harmonic interpolation right is it making sense sir sir x minus x not if that's uh, x not matlab if uh, x not x not yeah but f prime x but instead of f of x not x not we write f prime x not right oh yes sir because f of x not x not doesn't make sense when you do this then it is f of x not minus f of x not upon x not minus x not that doesn't make sense right yes sir okay so this must have been discussed in the class when we are doing the hermite interpolation right so now what is the thing we have just two points we have a b for the time being i am taking say n is equal to say 4 okay so what do we have f of a f of b f prime a f double prime a and f triple prime a f prime b f double prime b and f triple prime b right so basically we have eight conditions so polynomial will be of degree 7 right and how do we solve it a a a a b b b b So F A, F A, F A, F A, F B, F B, F B, F B. So from here you will get F prime A, F prime A, F prime A. Now you can find F of A B, then F prime B, F prime B, F prime B. Right. So F prime A. Is f of a comma a right? Similarly, from here you will get f double prime a, f double prime a. It is written as f of a a b. It is written as f of a b b. Then here f double prime b, f double prime b. Right? This is the way we do these things. F triple prime a. 
F A A A B F A A A B B F A B B B and F triple prime B and then F four times A B F A B B B Have I made something wrong here? Okay, it should be like this. F triple A B B. F double A triple B. Then F A triple B, right? And so on. So this is the way we do in if we are going with a Newton's kind of formulation, right? So can you guess now what to do? So how things will work? If I am making a polynomial of x, so it will be just f of a plus x minus a, a f of a comma a, which is nothing but I will write it down. What we mean here, f of a a a. Which is nothing. F A and then X minus B. A cube X minus B and so on. Right? This how this is how things work. Am I making sense here? And so on, what will be the last thing? X minus B square, F of A, A four times A and then B, B. Something of this sort. Right? Think. So if I am saying f of x naught, x1, x2, and so on, xm, it is something of this sort. So for the time being, if I make it x naught, x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6, and x7. So this is how things work. Is the polynomial clear? Yes, sir. So now you know that uh, how to write the if I want, okay, it is my interpolation. Let me write my interpolation as p of x and fx was my exact function. So from Newton's error, we know that it will be nothing but x minus a and then x minus a cube x minus b square into f sorry 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 it will be this because we have a four times right and is equal to four x minus a power four f of double a double a b that was missed by me with this double a double a and b right this is by newton's error right yes so now you know how what what is the approximation for this?
see i am giving you a vague idea how to proceed this when you are dealing in the derivatives and we have a constant powers you will see that we can't really do these things similar kind of stuff in question number 2 and question number 3 but when you are given that key you have certain points in this case we have two points a and b and we have given the same kind of derivatives there but i mean is if f if sir, fn a is yes sir if a a last mein ek x bhi aayega na yeah right right so that's why i was saying that i'm just giving a vague idea sorry it will be x also so then we will get the derivative f of 2n right because it will be yes. ar- around 2n plus 1 terms in our case it will be 9 so we will have a f of 8th derivative right so what i mean to say is if you have given certain points say x not x1 and so on xm so basically m plus 1 points and you are given derivative fn of xi where for some n for some n and one less than equal zero less than equal to less than equal to m then you can proceed in this manner right you just suppose that okay so we have till nth derivative so write x not x not and so on x not uh, n times then x1 x1 and so on x1 n times and so on xm xm and so on xm n times so these will be your degrees of freedom and now you have to do the inter- newtons kind of interpolation right is it making sense now yes sir clear okay so can we now find the error which is asking in the question fx minus p of x yes okay let us proceed to question number 2 then so does anyone of you have tried question number 2 see when we do question number 2 or question number kind of stuff or question number 3 kind of stuff uh, you can't really proceed in this fashion because what will be the issue if i proceed in like this say which we are proceeding in question number 1 so what do we need to do we need a polynomial of degree less than equal to 2 and we have two points x not x not and x1 x1 so from here we will get f of x not f of x not f of x1 f of x1 that is fine right from here i can obviously get f prime x not which is already given from here i should get f of x not x1 right and from here i can find f prime x1 but i don't know this so i can't really find this right this is not known to us hence can't really apply above technique is this why fine why we can't do in the previous cases if f of x1 was given then surely we right so what i'm saying is if x f not was given f of x1 was given and f prime x not was given then at least i could be applied i could have reached till here but still there is an issue i don't know this 
f prime x1 should also be there so what do we mean what do we conclude by this which i have already written here that if we have some m plus 1 points and for all those m plus 1 points we have to have similar kind of derivatives condition we can't have key, we have f prime for one one thing but we don't have f prime from for the other node if we have such a case we can't really proceed with the newton's form of fermat interpolation is it making sense yes sir yes sir so, okay great so have anyone tried with any other methods see the very basic thing which we can proceed here say you don't have any clue sir yes sir if we uh, p dash uh, x not equals to i y uh, not y dash uh, or last condition dono se uh, lagrange is polynomial and then satisfy p x not equals to y not have you done such kind of stuff you are saying that you find a polynomial p delta x for the time being such that p delta prime of x not is equal to y not prime and p delta prime of x1 is equal to y1 prime right that is what you are saying yes sir so first of all find this polynomial and then and then satisfy the uh, uh, first condition p x not equals to y not so basically what will you do here you will find some p delta of x not right and whatever number you are choosing we are getting right we don't care if what we are getting exactly say it is some constant c because it will be a constant only right so what you will do at the end you will be doing like this we will define px is equal to p delta x plus y minus p delta of x not right y not minus p delta of x not this is what you are telling yes sir sure and in order to find such polynomial what do we what will we do how will you find p delta x now by lagrange's interpolation okay but from lagrange's interpolation you will get p delta prime of x not right p delta prime of x you can find because you have two conditions so you will get a polynomial of degree 1 but that polynomial will be the derivative so then integrate karenge then you have to integrate it right and you have to integrate p delta prime of x and then some constant p delta of x so this is one way right perfectly fine any other method Okay. By the way, can you tell me what should be the what polynomial did you get at the end? No, sir. Uh, uh, I have tried it now only. Hello. Hello, sir. Yeah. Can you tell me what polynomial did you get at the end? Uh, sir, sir, I, I, 
so i think about it but sir this idea came to my mind now only okay so let me tell you the polynomial which you will get at the end because they are saying that we have to find the polynomial in of this sort okay why not prime l1x plus 5n prime l2x this is a perfect way to do this problem there is no doubt that you can proceed in this manner or not you can always so let me tell you what this the polynomial coming at the end why not prime 2x not minus x1 x minus x1 square minus x not minus x1 plus five n prime to x one minus n x one. This is zero. It is y not p prime of x not. This will get zero for sure. This will give you y not prime, and then p prime of x one. This will give you zero. This will give right. See the idea which you are giving will also give the similar kind of result. You can even check that. For It will be x minus x one upon x not minus x one into y not prime plus x minus x not x one minus x not into y prime. Right. So this is by Lagrange's method. So what will be my p of x? It will be nothing but x minus x one square upon two x minus one plus what square y one prime upon two times x one minus x not plus some constant c. Now this constant we want p of x not is equal to y not. So basically c will be nothing but y not minus x not minus x one square. Upon two times x not minus x one, y not prime. Fine. Yes, sir. Okay. So another method which you can proceed. Say for the time being, you are not getting such kind of. So you are getting some other sort of polynomials. Say these are not the conditions. Okay. For example, question number three. So, what you can really do, you can anyway start with this kind of stuff. A x square plus b x plus c. Assume that this is the polynomial. Okay. Because any polynomial degree two will look like this, right? Then you have three conditions: a x not square plus b x not plus c is equal to y not to a x not plus b is equal to y one prime. And two a x one plus b is equal to sorry, it is y not prime. So three conditions. Three unknown. Okay. So I am not telling it is the best way. Of course, this is the best way which I was going to talk about initially. But since you already have an idea for this, I have discussed this first. But in case You do not such type of idea doesn't stuck to your mind, then please do not leave the question. You can anyway do with this. At least you will get to get something, right? Because nowhere in the question is mentioned that you have to use Lagrange's form of interpolation or something. They are just saying that give us a polynomial which satisfies this. Okay. Yes. Sir. Okay then. Question number three. So, 
In question three, we have condition on x naught, y naught, then x two is equal to y two, and then p prime of x one is equal to y one prime. So how will we proceed here? The same way. हेलो यस सर ओके सो रिमेन इंटरनेट कनेक्शन इज गेटिंग वेरी डिसेबल्ड अगेन एंड अगेन सो वी वर ऑन क्वेश्चन नंबर 3 सो प्लीज टेल मी कैन यू गेट टू क्वेश्चन नंबर 3 नाउ और एट लीस्ट गिव इट अ ट्राई इफ यू हैव एंड टिल नाउ
then we do question number 3 now or it need to be discussed because see i think it is the last problem to be discussed in this sheet Please tell me. Can we do question number three now? Sir, conditions. मतलब uh, uh, UI UI X UI X equals to delta I J. Uh, that is enough. Yeah, nothing else. मतलब anything else. Which UI X J are you talking about in question three? Uh, sir, uh, uh, the conditions to, uh, that satisfy for P X to exist and to be unique. So, can you tell me what is your U X? Hello. What is your UX? You are talking about. See, I was. Quite busy for the past week, so I couldn't able to take your lecture. So have a notes. Look at the notes, at the notations which ma'am is using. So you yes, have sir. to tell me what notations does this mean? Yes, P two n minus uh, x uh, is equals to summation y i u i x plus uh, summation y i dash v i x. Okay, so those notations you are saying. Okay, yes. Now I get that. So basically. Your U I X for something one minus L I of X and something and then V I will be something I suppose X minus X I square is that so? Something yes. Something of this sort. X minus X I L I X square. L I X square. X minus X I only. X I. Okay. So what do you? Uh, what are you saying here? How should we do it? What condition are you giving? Is it for UI X? For UI yes. X, delta I J. UI X equals to delta I J. X is equal to delta I J. So what is J here? So you mean U I of X T is equal to one. U I X J. So? Okay, U I of X T is equal to delta I J. From there you want to have U one and U three. You know, and U U one, right? Yes. And from V two, sorry, U not and U two, and from V one you want to have V Y one prime. It is Y two.
So if I see ma'am's notation, she's using. U I of x is equal to one minus two times L I prime evaluated x i and two x minus x i dot L I of x square, right? And for V I, it is x minus x i of L I of x square. Right. Yes, sir. So, but see, what will be L? Say for the time being, what do you think? What should be the L note of X? It will. I think it will sort of create some trouble here, because in general, my L note X will be X minus X one and X minus X two. Upon x naught minus x one, x naught minus x two, right? Because we take all the nodes. This is what we define in L note. That's when we have three notes: x note, x one, x two. But do you think it will work here? No, sir, it will not work. Oh, okay. And can you see what is the issue? Because when we create such type of polynomial, we are anyway putting this condition: L naught of x one is also zero. And similarly, your L two of x one will be also zero. And then your this v i, this also v say v one of x one will also be zero. So in particular, basically your p. That x one will be zero, right? So basically, I think you want to define this way, na? Uh, u one of x into y, sorry, u naught of x into y naught plus u two of x into y one, sorry, y two plus v one of x into y one prime, right? So, but if you see now, p of x one is coming out to be zero here. If we proceed in such a manner, okay. But you are. I will say that you are on the very right track because at the end everything can be written as some sort of linear combination of the Lagrange's polynomial, one minus of some value. So what I'm saying is one minus some L i of x at j, L i of x of i at certain point. So or two minus something. So something of This sort can work here, of course, but what you can do here exactly? Try to recall how the polynomial should look like. One way is definitely that Lagrange's interpolation, and we can work out the things. Another way is, of course, a x square plus b x plus c. We can start working with this type of polynomial because we have three conditions, so we can surely get the value of a b c. One more thing which you can really proceed is say start with initially y one prime, okay? Because at the end we want my pol I want my polynomial to look like something of this sort. 
say some let me use the same notation which is given in question number 1 l not of x into y not plus l1 l2 of x to y2 plus l1 of x into y1 prime right at the end we want to find a px which can look like this right so what i'm saying is start with p of x give this condition y1 prime so we want that l1 so when i'm on the y1 prime i want my l1 of x0 to be 0 and l1 of x2 to be 0 right these two condition i want so that y1 prime shouldn't disturb me when i am when i am going to find p of x0 or p of x2 right See, I am telling you a way to how you can generate a polynomial without going deeply into the Lagrangian interpolation or without going to the tough analysis here. If you like this method, it is well and good. If you don't, you can already you can anyway proceed with the Lagrangian functions. Okay. So why we are taking y one prime? because it is given here that the condition to p prime of x1 to be y1 prime okay okay so how i want to define my y1 prime and the function such that it is zero on x1 and it is zero on x2 so i can write it like this at least okay there must be something constant in the denominator but at least this should be there with the y1 prime you see when you will write a polynomial in this form p of x is equal to l not x y not plus l2 x y2 plus l1 x y1 prime you will see that p of x not sorry L not of x not is equal to one. L not of x two is equal to zero, and L not prime at x one is equal to zero. Similarly, L two of x not will be zero. L two of x one is one, and L two prime of x one is equal to zero. And when I coming to this, so L one of x not is zero. L one of x two. L one prime of x one is equal to one. If I can find such functions, then I am through, right? If I can yes. find some L not, L two and L one of this sort, then I can I am through. I can write P of x to be like this, right? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. So, what do we need to do now? Let us first of all find L one. For L one of x, I want L one of x not is zero. L one of x two is zero. So I know that it should be something of this sort at least, right? Into some constant or something, but at least this should be here. Yes, and find the condition constant term uh, with. L1 the conditions. That so will be sorry. So it will be 2x minus x naught plus x2, right? Is this true? L1 prime x will be nothing but this. Hello. Yes. So basically, yes, if I write my L one of x as x minus x naught, x minus x two upon two times of x one minus x naught plus x two. Now look at this function. It it will satisfy your L one x naught is zero is equal to L one of x two 
and when you do l1 prime of x1 it is coming out to be 1 is this making sense now is this function fine for everyone only l1 x i am not talking about l0 and l2 at, at as of now yes sir yes sir fine fine so let me show you how you can find l not x also so basically in l not of x i want l not of x not to be 1 and l not of x2 to be 0 right so what is the usual way we do when we are in the Lagrange's form x minus x not minus x2 at least this should be there somehow yes okay very good so but we know that we want to do the derivatives also and derivative can trouble me so when I do the derivative of this function, I will get 1 upon x0 minus x2, which I want to get rid of. So let's look at this function. Minus x2, x minus x0, x0 minus x2. And then it is the same function. So 2 of x1 minus x0 plus x2. I will tell you how the motivation behind how can you find such kind of function. Till here it is fine, right? X minus x2 upon x0 minus x2, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So now what I'm, I want to do? If I do the derivative, then I am getting that I am having some trouble here. I am getting 1 upon x0 minus x2. Right. So if I just do this x0 minus x2 of my L1 of x, doesn't this work? Because I already know that L1 of x0 is 0, L1 of x1, x2 is 0, and L1 prime of x1 is 0. So what about this? So it will be L1 prime. So if I evaluate it at x1, it will come out to be 1 and everything will be 0. What I'm writing here, you can see again, L0 of x is equal to x minus x2 upon x0 minus x2. This is one thing minus 1 upon x0 minus x2 because I want this into L1 of x. How is it? Is, thing, is this making sense now? See, I know this is a kind of non-trivial kind of stuff if you see at the first instance. But if you just apply your conditions one by one, you will get that this is one of the simplest form to proceed with such type of questions. Because anyway, if you are going to do with ax square plus bx plus c, then you will have terms abc in terms of x0 and x1 and everything like that. Because if I start with like this, ax0 square plus bx0 plus c is equal to y0, ax1 x2 square plus bx1 plus c is equal to y2, and to ax1 plus b is equal to y1 prime. So you can anyway start with this. But then you need to find a, b, c in terms of y naught, in terms of y naught, y2, y1 prime, x naught, x1, x2, which is, which in itself is a lot of trouble working with so many variables. And at the end, we won't, we may, want the solution to be 
be of this form only y not of x l not of x and so on. so if the question ask you to find a polynomial in this form then i think going in this way is a little bit of trouble because you have to find solve the matrix uh, a b c right you have to solve the values of a b c in terms of y not and x not and so many variables so i, I will say that just go with this method this one particularly when everything of yours failed and you have enough time like you have solved your paper completely with whatever you were aware about in the exam you have solved that you have some time left and you are not getting any idea to find a polynomial then you can anyway work with this type of stuff but it is the longest term right it will take a long very long time and a minor correction a minor mistake can make your answer wrong so what is the best approach if i say so first is analyzing the lagrange's form if possible as we have done in question number 2 or else start with such kind of polynomial y not x l not of sorry y not is not a function of x Plus y two l two x plus y one prime l one x. Start with such type of function and see what conditions do we need on these functions l not l one l two. Because anyway, l not l one l two can be drawn from again from Lagrange's form. Because but generating l one x will be very easy for you because see you can see that. But do we need l one x to be zero at two points? So Lagrange is directly giving me okay. You have to have x minus x not and x minus x two with you. But instead of l one of x one is equal to one, we want l one prime at x one to be one. So that's how we got this coefficient. This one. Are you getting my point? Or am I confusing you? Yeah, so we will try and. Okay, so just uh, let me patch up all these things. What I'm saying is, when we go on the Lagrange's function, what do we really do? When I am doing L J X, so I want my L J to be zero at all the nodes except at X J. So this is how I work. X minus X two. X minus X of J minus one, X minus X of J plus one, and so on. X minus X, X n, right? But we know that uh, when I apply X J, it will be so much trouble because X J minus X one, X J minus X two. So in order to normalize that, I just divide by X J minus X one, X J minus X two, and so on. This is how Lagrange's functions are defined. See, in a similar manner. At present, I don't want my L J of x J to be zero. Instead, I want my L J prime of x J to be zero, one. So we don't have to do anything. We just need to do the derivative of the above function, right? So if I, for the time being I define it as Q of x, so basically just do Q prime x J. So L J x will be nothing but Q of x as Q prime x J. So for this L J X is surely L equal to J and L J prime of X J will be your one. To find the functions, okay. You guys can give it. If any one of you to me, all right. Uh, and yes, please sir. have a reading. Please have a reading to question number four, five, six, seven. Now, are they doable? Because if you know the theory, you just need to put the enters in the formula.
Are we good with Kush assignment sheet five now? Excuse me, sir. Yes. So, sir, in question number three, they are asking only for the condition yes, and not for the polynomial. So, can we directly write that the polynomial should be of the type um, like what you have already told, like y not of l one l not x plus y y two of l two x plus y one of l one prime x, and then these these conditions, the six conditions on l not l one and uh, l two, can be written. So, is this enough, or do we need to find the polynomial? explicitly see or if you are just go with this yes the thing is uh, that was a good question because the question is still incomplete so the thing is if i go with this manner i am sure that i can get a polynomial right it is just the existence of the polynomial right yes sir but for the uniqueness you see that i if i say that fx is equal to say ax square Plus p x. Write it like this: a one x square, a two x plus a three, and say it is also b one x square plus b two x plus b three. We want to show that they they have to have exist only one, right? Yes, sir. So a one x node square plus a two x node plus a three. Is anyway equal to y note, and similarly b one x note square plus b two x note plus b three is also equal to y note. Okay, so from here you do one thing. It will be so. Okay, and. Similarly, for the condition of this x two square plus a two x two plus a three is equal to y two even x two square b two x two plus b three is equal to y two and one more condition we have two a x one plus a two is equal to y one and two b x one plus two a one. Is equal to y one. So from these six conditions, you have to find condition on x not x one and x two, and you will see that x one shouldn't be equal to x not plus x two by two for uniqueness. And if you want an answer, it is very easy. So x two minus x naught square plus a two x two minus x naught is already y two minus y naught. It is also the same thing holds for this. Sorry, x a two. To minus x not is equal to y to minus. So basically, we have a one minus b one, x two plus x not is equal to c two. And similarly, you can get the other conditions. At the end, you will and. One more condition you can have a one minus b one into two times of x one is equal to b two minus a two. So from these two, you can conclude that in order to have a unique solution from uniqueness, what do I mean? In order to have. For all i, we have to have and if you want, I can do one. It will just take me. Just please bear with me for five more minutes. I can let me write the proof here. 
for the time being assume that a1 a1 minus b1 should be some a b2 minus a2 should be some b for the time being just x2 plus x0 should be some x tilde and 2x1 is equal to some y delta so basically we have a of x tilde is equal to b and a of y delta is also b so basically a times x tilde minus y tilde is zero but if we assume this condition so basically we are assuming x tilde is not equal to y tilde so this implies a has to be zero and hence B has to be zero and this implies as a x square plus b x plus c sorry a1 a2 a3 is equal to b1 x square plus b2 x plus b3 a is equal to zero implies a1 is equal to b1 b is equal to zero implies a2 is equal to b2 from here you will get a3 is equal to b3 is this proof fine i have written it in a little bit hurry because we have already it is already one is it fine that how to prove the uniqueness now uh, no problem so we got the idea okay so you already have the recording you can find this or probably if you want i can make a pdf of it and will share with you because it is more or less have all the tutorial sessions i suppose or at least from it doesn't have all all of them okay but at least i will try to give a neat proof of question um, uniqueness of question number three and will share with some one of you Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. But the idea is clear, right? How to prove the uniqueness? Yes, sir. Sir, one more thing I wanted to ask. Yes. Sir, in tutorial sheet number two, uh, in question number three, there are four parts, and we need to find yes. the um, we need to rank them in the order of convergence, or the apparent okay. of speed of convergence. So, sir, can right. you please solve any one part of that? Okay. From one fifteen, another session. So you're not audible. So you're not audible. What I'm saying is, I do have a session, another session from one fifteen. So okay. will it be fine if I share the solutions with you? Okay, sir. No problem. Okay. I'm sorry because I I still want no. to discuss with it, but I do have a, another class. No problem, sir. Sir, also, sir, sir, what kind of questions can we expect in minors? Like uh, questions of five, one, two, three, as in sheet seven, or of the type uh, four, five, six, seven. Like, like on a slightly. See the paper. The exam is made for everyone, so you can expect a mixture of both the things. But more or less, you will, you can say that out of hundred percent, you will get at least sixty to seventy percent of question as the initial one, one, two, three, four type type of stuff. Because till now we haven't done anything hardcore. We are just doing bisection, Newton, Epson, and interpolation, right? If you see assignment sheet okay. five, there are one to three questions are slightly difficult, and then they are just asking for the interpolation. And if you see carefully, question number one to three are just asked to make you clear with the theory that whatever concept was there for Hermite interpolation, whether it is clear or not, that's the thing. But uh, don't worry, this type of lengthy question will not be asked in the minor because it is a limited period paper, right? Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Okay. And one. Sir, so were you saying something? Yeah, the, I was saying that if in case you guys face any kind of difficulty, you can still ask me. 
okay that's okay, the sir. only thing i want to comment okay thank you okay sir okay thank you sir okay okay